brothers and sisters, welcome to today's episode. Here are two important topics. Sparks hope the return of Lacia Clarendon is the start of a second half turnaround. And Pac-12 Commissioner compares star power of Deion Sanders to Taylor Swift and Beyonce. And half the season left to answer, will they participate in the playoffs or the 2024 draft lottery? Lacia Clarendon the Sparks emerge from the All-Star break with a six-game losing streak might be able to help with that. The Sparks, 7-13, will have a boost when Clarendon, who shot 40% from the three-point line and averaged 7.8 points with 3.7 assists in 26.7 minutes before partially tearing their right plantar fascia in June, returns Thursday for LA's game against the Minnesota Lynx, 9-12, in Minneapolis. An experienced veteran with 11 seasons under their belt, the same as all-star Neka Ogwamike who is matching her 2016 MVP year statistics, averaging 19.8 points with 9.6 rebounds in 32 minutes, Clarendon also brings intangibles to the court. I'm realistic in that way to just impact the game the ways that I know how. Clarendon said Wednesday about balancing having patience for finding their chemistry on the court again with the urge to make an immediate impact. And trust I'm bringing the intangible things that I've had to bring that don't have anything to do with making or missing a shot. Talking, or how hard I play, being in the right spot at the right time, those kind of cerebral things that I bring to the team. Experience and a natural feel for the court will help head coach Kurt Miller as the Sparks' playbook becomes multifaceted again. The injuries decreased practice time on the court and overextended healthy players simplified the team's playbook in the first half which, in turn, affected results. It's a vicious cycle, Miller said Tuesday. Clarendon, who missed 14 games, is the only injured player guaranteed to return Thursday. Lexi Brown has been practicing and might compete this week, according to general manager Karen Bryant. Chiny Ogwamike will be out four to six more weeks with her foot injury and Nia Cloden, with a knee injury, does not have an estimated return yet. In the absence of the injured players, rookie Zia Cook filled a large role in the first half of the season as one of only two sparks to play every game averaging 4.7 points in 14.3 minutes. Clarendon imparted a subtle veteran guarding trick to her on the court, Wednesday. I'm heartbroken. Sparks finalize roster amid criticism of WNBA roster limits. I was guarding Zia, Clarendon said, and I kind of like pushed her into something. She was like, oh, whoa. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's a veteran move. Like it was something I did defensively that was really subtle. She was kind of laughing about it. And I winked at her. I was like, I have to teach you that. She was like, yeah, for real. The way your experience from playing in this league gives you knowledge, there's some things you only get from experience, Clarendon said. So you try and pass that down in little ways that you can to the younger people. As Clarendon, and potentially Brown, return, the Sparks' early season challenge of creating a consistent starting lineup may become a strength. They have had 12 different starting lineups, meaning, they can put together lineups this half that other teams in the league have seen for single-digit minutes. I'm looking forward to the chess match, Miller said. One new combination is Azura Stevens in her natural position as a power forward with Brown and Clarendon, both strong shooters. Stevens has flourished in this new position, recently logging a season-high 22 points against the Aces. The Sparks have missed the playoffs only six times in their 27-season history, but that includes the previous two seasons. The players want to make the playoffs, Miller said. I wasn't a coach brought in to tank. It's not in our DNA, general manager Karen Bryant said. The team first has to face a challenging upcoming road schedule against the Lynx, where Clarendon played in 2021, the Dallas Wings, 11-9, and Indiana Fever, 6-15. 
If we can make a run and get in the playoffs, we'll be a tough out, Miller said. If we continue to have to pivot and we fall short, and we're in the lottery, then we hope the balls bounce our way, literally. Added Bryant, if we can get ourselves into a playoff hunt position with the first half of the season we've had, my goodness, what an incredible accomplishment that will be, and something I think we'd be really proud of. The Sparks, 7-13 will have a boost when Clarendon, who shot 40% from the three-point line and averaged 7.8 points with 3.7 assists in 26.7 minutes before partially tearing their right plantar fascia in June, returns Thursday for LA's game against the Minnesota Lynx, 9-12, in Minneapolis. An experienced veteran with 11 seasons under their belt, the same as all-star Neka Ogwamike who is matching her 2016 MVP year statistics, averaging 19.8 points with 9.6 rebounds in 32 minutes, Clarendon also brings intangibles to the court. The commissioner of the Pac-12 conference still has a big question to answer in coming weeks. Will the new media rights deal he has been working be good enough to hold his league together and prevent other members from leaving? USA Today Sports spoke to the commissioner, George Klyovkov, by phone after he addressed reporters Friday at the Pac-12's annual football media day. In the brief interview, he compared the star power Colorado football coach Dion Sanders to that of singers Taylor Swift and Beyonce. He also expounded on his comments at media day when he said the new media would happen in the near future and that the longer we wait for the media deal, the better our options get. What does that mean? And what about the bottom line about whether he believes the New Deal will keep the Pac-12 intact after USC and UCLA depart for the Big Ten next year? The answer is yes, he told USA Today Sports. Maybe he wouldn't say otherwise even if he didn't believe it, but also didn't have to say the league's options have improved over time. He is working to replace the Pac-12's media rights deal with ESPN and Fox expires in 2024. Such deals are the big drivers that fuel revenue sharing among schools, which was about $37 million per school in the Pac-12 in fiscal 2022. That ranked last among Power 5 conferences and was far behind the Big Ten, $58.8 million. If the new deal doesn't measure up, Colorado and others could consider a jump to greener pastures. What did you mean your options have gotten better? Our board has been patient, Klyovkov said, referring to the league's governing board of directors. The market has come back to us. We have bidders at the table who weren't at the table three or six or nine months ago. And our deal got better the longer we waited. What about the length of the deal? In April, USA Today Sports spoke to University of Colorado Chancellor Phil DeStefano, who sits on the Pac-12's governing board of directors. He said then that we're not going to think about going anywhere, none of us, until we see what kind of offer we get. DeStefano also said he might prefer a shorter-term deal of five to seven years instead of being locked into a longer contract like the 12-year deal that ends next year. That deal then was touted as the most valuable in college sports at the time. We looked at the 12 or 13 year horizon and just didn't think through enough about how we were going to be leapfrogged by others, De Stefano said then. He said in five years we'll get a much better feel for streaming services, which are a big factor in the evolving media landscape. What does the commissioner say about that? He predicted success in the short term and noted the college football playoff will expand from 4 to 12 teams starting in the 2024 season. The Pac-12 hasn't had a team make the playoff since Washington in 2016. All of our presidents and chancellors are bullish on the future of the conference and particularly how quickly their investment in football has started to pay dividends, Klyovkov said. They look at the future and go. If we're this good the second year of our investment in football, think about what we're going to be in three or four or five years. 
and we're going to playing in the college football playoff because of the expanded CFP, maybe have two teams into the CFP playoffs, and we're going to be in a good position. I believe in the future of the conference and how good the conference is going to be in a short period of time. And what about Coach Prime? Football coaches come and go and are not typically a factor when negotiating a media rights contract. But Colorado is a different case this year after hiring coach Prime Deion Sanders in December. Fox has already selected Colorado's first two games to air in its coveted big noon time slot September 2nd and 9th at TCU and at home against Negroes. Brothers and sisters, we have come to the